Consider a case where the patient has a cold while traveling since 3 to 4 weeks with hollow dry cough, hoarseness, toughness in the larynx aggravated at night. The patient also has chest constriction with stitching pain in the chest on the left side of the chest aggravated by lying on it. As a concomitant, the patient has internal heat without thirst and exhausting perspiration. There is great drowsiness and restlessness with sleep. The patient wakes up frequently in sleep and the face of the patient is pale, collapsed and circumscribed with redness of cheeks. Pressure in the stomach aggravated by eating, aggravated by milk and with vomiting. The patient has a vomiting of ingesta with extraordinary emaciation and patient prefers warmth. Now, in this case, it's difficult for us to derive any mental symptoms for prescribing any remedy or also it's difficult to understand any pathological characteristics. So, what you will do in this case? In such cases, the approach that comes to our great help is the approach of Dr. Bonnihosen, who was an important and one of the initial pioneers in homeopathy. But to understand this approach, we have to first understand the philosophy of Dr. Bonnihosen. And so, guys, welcome back to our channel, Homeopathic Trials. In this video, we will try to understand Dr. Bonnihosen's approach in detail. And so, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. First, let's try to understand who was Dr. Bonnihosen. Baron Clemens Maria Franz von Bonnihosen was born in 1785 in Netherlands. He had a doctorate in civil and criminal law. During his tenure in his Dutch civil services, he developed the state agriculture team. This got him interested in the studies of agriculture and allied sciences, especially botany. He was the director of the botanical garden at Münster. His expertise in botany leads the most prominent European botanists. Thus, Dr. Bonnigerson was a lawyer by profession and botanist by heart. In both his interests, we can see a common point that both of these interests demand a strong analytical mind that can look and think beyond the known facts and analyze the facts to reach to some conclusion. This quality of Dr. Bonnigerson has somewhere helped him to excel in homeopathy. But do you know how a person who was a lawyer and botanist got converted to homeopathy? In 1827, Bonnigerson contracted tuberculosis, followed by an in tractable lung disease. Now certain that he was about to die, he began writing farewell letters to his friends. One of them friend and fellow botanist Karl Ernst August V urged him to use the pulsatilla based on the homeopathic principles. One morning was cured and thus became a convert to the new therapy that is homeopathy and became a student of Master Hanneman and a staunch believer of homeopathy. Now that we have understood the basic qualities and the basic life sketch of homeopathy and of Dr. Bonnigerson, let's try and understand the philosophy of Dr. Bonnigerson. Dr. Animan, in his aphorism 153, says that the only guiding indic indication to prescribe any remedy in homeopathy is the most striking, particular, unusual and peculiar symptom of the case. Now, but he left the judgment of which symptom of the case fits in this category uh, to the physician himself. When Dr. Bonnigerson started following homeopathy, he somewhere felt that these guidelines were not enough and some concrete way has to be uh, devised in order to derive these symptoms from any case. And thus, he began to study the homeopathic literature in detail and came up with few concepts of his own, which even today are quite relevant in our practice and help a lot in many cases. The very first concept was the concept of complete symptoms. This was the very first concept brought up by Dr. Bonigosan. When he read the homeopathic literature and also observed the several cases, he saw that the symptom should have four components, which when presented, help the physician to prescribe it. Any symptom can be said as a complete symptom only when it has location, a sphere of action or the organ where the symptom expresses, or sensation, the type of suffering the patient experiences, and either a modality that is the circumstances which either increase or ameliorate the suffering of the patient or a concomitant. Now here it is important to understand the concept of concomitant in detail. Now what is concomitant? Concomitant is a symptom that always accompanies the chief complaint but has no pathological correlation with the disease. For example, the reduced thirst in fever or headache along with back pain. 
Dr. Monigasan used to consider these symptoms to be the most striking and the characteristic symptom of any case and thus gave extreme importance to those symptoms. But when Dr. Bonigosen was using the concept of complete symptoms in his practice, he found that there were many practical difficulties while using this concept. So to tackle them, he came up with two another concepts. The very first was the doctrine of analogy. Dr. Bonigosen had observed that in many cases, it was difficult to find a complete symptom for prescribing. He believed that when anyone falls ill, the person it is the person who falls ill and not the organs and only thus any symptom appearing in any part of the body is the symptom of the person and not only of the organ and thus has to be considered in the similar way based on this logic he said that if any particular modality appears in a particular organ then it can be used to complete this in other symptom which is appearing anywhere else in the body this he termed as doctrine of analogy to understand it, let's consider an example. Suppose, in a case, you have a drawing knee pain without any modality and headache better by pressure. Then, to complete the knee pain symptom, we can consider the same modality and thus, it can be easily said that the patient has drawing knee pain better by pressure. A doctrine of grand generalization was another concept brought up by Dr. Bonigosen. Further, when Dr. Bonigosen was using this concept of analogy in his practice, he found that this concept was highly criticized. He then believed that if a particular modality or a concomitant is appearing only in a particular organ, it can be raised in importance to the level of a person as it is the person who falls ill and not the organs. He believed that what is true for the part is true for the whole. And thus, this concept of raising the modality or concomitant to the level of a person is in importance is known as doctrine of grand generalization. For example, while using the Bonigosen approach, if the person is having headache aggravated by sun exposure, then we can say that the person as a whole is aggravated by sun exposure. The totality in homeopathic practice is the true diagnosis of the disease and at the same time the diagnosis of the remedy. Thus, totality of any case helps us to understand the disease of the patient in its whole extent. Now that we know about the philosophical concepts of Dr. Bonigosen, Let's try to understand the concept of totality given by Dr. Bonningersen. So, Dr. Bonningersen, while understanding the disease picture, defines it using seven questions or seven qualities. The very first is quiz or who, which means it includes the gender, age, bodily constitution, temperament or the personality and individuality or the nature of the person. This question focuses on understanding the person through any changes appearing in their temperament, constitution or nature. Next is the quid or what. This refers to the disease, its nature and peculiarity and the need for pure observation is seen here. Here he tries to understand the characteristic expressions of the disease and he says what the homeopathic medicine prescribed must correspond with this characteristic symptom. Next is the UB or where. So this part refers to the location. We all know that the most homeopathic medicines have a strong affinity or a tendency to act on a specific organ. Thus, while prescribing it, it is important to consider the location or the organ where the symptom is appearing. Next is quibis oxalis, that is the accompanying factors. These are nothing but the concomitant symptoms that we have already discussed in this video. Next is cure or why. This is the most important part of the homeopathic totality. It includes the precipitating, fundamental and maintaining causes. Now, several proximal causes, example trauma, toxic exposure, drugs, emotions, never well since, and exposure to bad weather, and miasm, that is sora, psychosis, and syphilis, are all included over here. The next can be commando, that is, what factors are influencing the main disease. It again, it is important part of the totality where it includes the various factors that are either aggravating or ameliorating the chief complaint. It includes the food and drink, weather, position, heat, cold, and anything which can have the capacity to either aggravate or ameliorate the chief complaint. The next is and the last is quando, meaning when. Giving importance to time was identified by Bonnigosen. Thus, this includes time or onset or time of aggravation, sequence of events, etc. Quando can be often included under Komodo unless it refers to the sequence of events or chronology. So, in this video, we have tried to understand the philosophy and concept of disease by Dr. Bonigosen. In the next part of the video, we will discuss the work of Dr. Bonigosen, his repertories, that is TPB and the repertory of antisorics.
so stay tuned for that video but do let us know your valuable feedback in the comment section below about this video and also don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel